Hi again, folks. It's Tom McLaughlin coming to you from the 2018 States and Nation Policy Summit here in Washington, D.C. We're here on Friday, and I'm here with uh, Taryn Bragdon from the Foundation for Government Accountability. Uh, and you were just t part of the first ever Bradley panel, or Bradley Forum. How did that go for you? It was a really great opportunity. I was a member of ALEC years ago, so it's fun to be back here and talking with the members today. That's right. You uh, said you were a member of ALEC. You were, a, uh, you were in the main state legislature, weren't you? I was. Uh, I had the honor of being elected in 1996, so 22 years ago. It's amazing how time passes. Wow. Curse of adulthood. <laughs> uh, yeah. But it was a great experience. Uh, and which, which branch of the main government were you in? Uh, the House of Representatives. You were a representative. Yep. Great. So uh, is there any kind of experiences or any kind of um, lessons that you bring from the main state house to what you do now? I think one of the great opportunities of being an elected official is you understand firsthand what constituents, what right. voters deal with. And so it gives you a sense of empathy for the diverse group that you represent. I had in my district one of the largest uh, blocks of public housing north of Boston oh, in wow. Maine, uh, as well as some very prosperous areas. So it was a really diverse district. Um, and that was a great experience, but you also appreciate the burdens that a lot of public officials have with having to cover lots of different issues. Right. And so they need help with expertise in particular areas. Very cool. Uh, so now you guys over at the FGA do a lot of uh, stuff with Medicare, Medicaid, uh, that sort of thing. Can you go a little deeper on what you guys do with that? Sure. So at the Foundation for Government Accountability, what we're focused on is how do we help millions of Americans achieve the American dream? And we focus on three different policy areas uh, focused on that one big goal. One, helping people move from welfare to work. Two, reducing different government barriers to better jobs with bigger paychecks. And number three, uh, expanding private health care options so that people can have coverage as they move from welfare oh. to work and better jobs. Very cool. So uh, what are kind of some of the policy prescriptions that you, that you see as uh, important to bringing, uh, bringing America, helping Americans get to work and, you know, have a better life? Well, first and foremost, we're in a really exciting economic and political moment. There's so many uh, states that are really looking at how do we advance opportunity. Uh, Republicans control legislatures in uh, 30 plus states. We have 27 Republican governors. You have 23 Republican trifectas, House, Senate, and governor. Uh, and new opportunities with the federal government, with the Trump administration. And so we are excited about that. And at that same time, the strong economy has America's job creators with 7 million open jobs. And so there's a great opportunity to take people who were maybe on the sidelines not working, who are able-bodied, and help get them into that first job, or maybe people who just need to get into a better job of getting government out of the way. So we focus on everything from work requirements in food stamps and in Medicaid for able-bodied adults to reducing different occupational licensing barriers for folks coming out of prison. Very cool. So I want to just uh, dig, dig in one more time on occupational licensing. That's a really interesting topic that we do a little bit of work on in, here at Alec as well. And I talked to Lee McGrath earlier in the week about it. Um, what about occupational licensing for people coming out of a prison uh, is so important that it's something that should be really focused on? It's a great question. So in the 1950s, only 5% of the workforce required an occupational license. Today, it's almost a third. And for folks without a college degree, oftentimes an occupational license is the pathway to getting a better paying job. Folks with an occupational license oftentimes are earning, without a college degree, earning 10, 15, 20% more than their counterparts. But what happens is, in a lot of states, folks with a criminal record, could be a felony criminal record or could be just even a more minor criminal record, are sometimes permanently exempt from getting certain occupational licenses. So we created this model legislation uh, about a year ago called Fresh Start that says if your crime is in the past, if it's not health and safety related, so we're not talking about violent crimes, but right. more minor felonies uh, and misdemeanors, then you should not be banned from going into certain occupations. Awesome. So kind of about uh, lowering, bar lowering barriers to economic empowerment then. Exactly. And what we know is for people coming out of prison, a job is one of the best predictors of whether they'll go back. So you come out of prison, you essentially have two choices. You go get a job or turn back to crime. We want to make it easy for people to take that first choice and the better one of going to get a job. That's great. Well, Taryn, I want to thank you for joining us today. I really appreciate your time and uh, wish you all the best going forward. Thanks so much. It was really nice talking with you. Absolutely. You too.